In this video, we're going to go through a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to get your real estate license and start your real estate career in Tennessee. And we're going to cover some other important things like what questions to ask when picking your first real estate brokerage to work at to give yourself the highest chance of success. And at the end of the video, we're going to go over all the costs associated with getting licensed so you know exactly how much to budget to get started. Let's dive right into the video. My name is Chris with the Empire Real Estate YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about real estate, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Before we get started, I want to offer you our free how to get licensed and start your real estate career guide. If you want to get your copy, there's a link down in the description below where you can download it. By the way, before we get started, if you enjoyed the video and get some value from it, smash the like button. We definitely appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. The very first step is meeting some basic requirements. In Tennessee, you're required to be 18 years old or older, and you have to have a high school diploma or a GED equivalent. Next, it's time to get your real estate pre-license education completed. In Tennessee, you're required to complete 90 hours of state-approved pre-license education classes. And yes, I know, 90 hours sounds like a ton of time to sit in a classroom, especially if you have a nine to five job or just a crazy busy schedule. Because of this, we recommend you check out Kleber Real Estate School. They offer these classes online. You can do them at the flexibility of your own schedule and at your own pace, and the students really love it. So if you wanna check them out, there's an affiliate link down in the description below where you'll find different sales and discounts. Once you complete the 90 hours of real estate pre-license education, it's time to schedule your exam. But put the brakes on because I would do something first, and this is gonna help increase your odds of passing the exam. If you didn't know, this exam has quite the high failure rate and I want to give you a couple basic tips to help you avoid failing and increase your odds of passing the exam. The very first thing I would do is I would spend a week to time block one or two hours a day to sit, read, study, and really retain more of the material because this is not an open book test and the test can be a little bit challenging. So if you spend that week to really study an hour a day, you're gonna absorb a lot more information. It could be a great refresher to the classes you just took, and it will increase your odds if you actually pass in the exam. Number two is finding a real estate study buddy. Finding somebody to study with, somebody that can go through this process with you, hold you accountable, will make it a lot easier. And you could even get flashcards and quiz each other back and forth, making it a lot, it a lot more fun and a lot more interactive. So finding a real estate study buddy can be a total game changer. And in my opinion, it will increase the odds of you passing this exam. The last one is if the studying by textbook and just reading material, or you can't find a real estate study buddy and those things just aren't working out for you, I would suggest you check out Prep Agent. I actually use Prep Agent to pass my exam and it's a test-like simulation tool that will take you through a very realistic exam-like situation and it will quiz you on different topics and it will really help you retain the information you need to know in order to pass your exam. And this actually gave me the confidence to go pass my exam. So I highly recommend it. And there's an affiliate link down below for Prep Agent as well if you want to check them out. So once you're totally confident and you've taken time to study and you're ready to take the test, it's time to schedule. So scheduling in Tennessee is done with PSI exams. They're a third party testing company and you can go on their website or give them a call. Give them at least 24 hours notice and make sure that they have availability on their schedule to get you in for an exam. And you're gonna to wanna to bring a couple basic things. The first thing is a basic non-scientific calculator for the math portion of the exam. And you're gonna to wanna to bring two forms of identification to get into the testing center on test day. Once you're in the exam, you're gonna notice that all the questions are multiple choice. And this might be some relief to you, but make sure you read these questions multiple times because they can be worded in a tricky way. And if you rush through the exam, you might end up answering questions wrong that you actually knew the right answer to. So taking time to really read the question, digest it, read it a couple of times, and then submit your answer can make all the difference between passing and failing. So take your time. Most people finish early. And even if you do this method, you're still probably going to finish early. So don't rush. You have plenty of time. Once you complete the exam, you're going to find out right away if you passed or failed. And this is the best part. You don't have to wait. There's not that much anxiety. You're going to find out right away. And if you failed, it's not the end of the world. A lot of the top real estate agents throughout the country failed the exam the first time around. It doesn't mean you're gonna be a bad real estate agent or it doesn't mean you're gonna fail at real estate. It just means you have to go study a little more and then come back 
and retake the test. You will have to repay the testing fee, but it's not the end of the world and just go back, study, come back and swing the bat again. Now, if you did pass the exam, it's time to celebrate because a lot of people fail this exam. It's a challenging exam. And the fact that you got through your real estate pre-license education and you passed the exam is a huge accomplishment and you're well on your way to becoming a real estate agent. The next step in this process is getting your background check and fingerprinting done. In Tennessee, they're gonna require you to get a background check done and make sure that you don't have anything on your record that would prevent you from getting licensed. The next step is finding the perfect brokerage to work with. And this is probably the easiest step in the process because most brokerages will take you as a new agent. There's not much risk involved. They're probably paying you 100% commission and taking you on as a new agent isn't a big deal, but this is a big deal because picking the right brokerage can make the difference between failure and success. Most new agents that get in this business actually fail. If you didn't know, 87% of agents that get into this industry fail out of the business. So picking the right mentor, picking the right brokerage can make all the difference. So I want to give you a couple important questions to ask when you're interviewing with brokerages. So you have a better idea of the things you should be asking. So you can align yourself with the right brokerage and give yourself a much higher chance of success. The first question I would ask is if they offer a mentor. So having a mentor for your first three to five deals can make all the difference because the first three to five deals are probably the most challenging deals. Problems are gonna come up, you're gonna be stressed out, you're not gonna know what to do, and having someone that you can call that's already been there, that has experience, that can walk you through challenging scenarios will make all the difference. When I first started, I know having this made a huge difference in my career because it can be challenging. You could be dealing with things that you just don't know what to do and you want to do the right thing for the client, but you just don't have the experience. So being able to pick your phone up and make a phone call is a really powerful thing. So I recommend you ask if there's going to be a mentor for your first three to five deals that you can call if things are going wrong that can kind of jump in, help you and fix the situation. Number two is asking if they have any training in place. So a mentor is great, but they're probably not going to be able to be there 24 seven. They probably operate their own real estate practice and being there every single day to guide you through small little things just doesn't make sense. So having a training module or a step-by-step -step program that can walk you through day one, all the way to building your business into something profitable and successful is a great thing to have because the biggest thing that I hear from new agents and the biggest frustration and the biggest problem is they just don't know what to do. They get their license, they walk into the brokerage on the first day and they just don't know where to start. Like they don't know what to do. They don't know what not to do. They don't know what activities are actually going to make the money. And I had the same experience when I walked into the brokerage on the first day, I had no idea how to make money. I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. And you just kind of sit there. Luckily, I met some great mentors, I met some top producers, and I was able to kind of learn from them and they was nice enough to kind of share with me what I should be doing, but that takes time. So having a step-by-step -step system that you can follow will accelerate the process and make your chances of success a lot more likely. Number three, you're gonna wanna ask how you're gonna get business. This is a very important question because most agents that fail, fail because they can't generate business and make enough money to stay in the business. A lot of people actually really like the business, but they're just not making enough money. So asking how you're going to get business and how they're going to train you to get business can be a very important question because some brokerages will train you how to market to your sphere of influence. And if you have a big network, this might work. I know many agents that have built six figure businesses doing this method alone, but if you don't have a huge network, like when I first started, I was only 22 and I didn't have a giant network of people that were buying and selling, get alone homeowners. So I needed to learn how to prospect, how to market, how to generate leads. So that's the avenue I went down. So you're gonna wanna decide what avenue you're, you wanna go down and align yourself with a brokerage that's going to teach you how to do that. So that's a very important question to ask to make sure that the brokerage that you align yourself with has the same vision as you and can help you build the kind of business that you want to build. By the way, we are looking for new partners in Tennessee. So if you're interested in partnering with me over at Team Power Unit, there's a link down in the description below to schedule a 30 minute Zoom call. I could jump on with you. Uh, we can see if it's a good fit. And if not, at least I can maybe answer some questions for you and point you in the right direction. The next step in the process is submitting your license application. So you're gonna wanna package up everything you've done so far, which is the pre-license education certificate, 
the past real estate exam and the past background check, and you're gonna send it out as with your license application and wait to hear back. Once you hear back, you're gonna get approved or declined. If you get the approved, you're now a licensed real estate agent. You're gonna hang your license with your sponsoring broker that you chose, and now it's time to start building your business. Really exciting times. But before we wrap this up, I do wanna go into one important thing, and that's the cost to get started so you know exactly what you need to budget to be able to start this process. The first expense I would budget for is your pre-licensed education classes, and I would budget between $250 and $500 to get this done. Next, we have the background check and the fingerprinting. I would budget between $50 and $100 to get this done. Next, we have the exam fee, which is gonna be $55, and then we have the license application fee, which is about $100. Last but not least, I would budget between two and $500 to get started with your new brokerage and get e &O insurance. So as you can see, it's not that expensive to get started. The hardest part is getting your pre-licensed education done and passing your real estate exam. So if you're gonna get started and get your license this year, I definitely wanna hear from you. Drop that in the comment section below. And if you have questions about getting your real estate license, drop that in the comment section below as well. I'll do my best to get back to you. So if you like this kind of content for real estate entrepreneurs, we come out with content on a weekly basis. So smash that like button and subscribe. Thanks so much for tuning in and you have an awesome night. Thank you.